so my name is Chihua Zhong. So I'm a PhD student at HEC Montreal. I'm very happy today here to present our work, our ongoing work at HEC Montreal, um, solving multi echelon inventory problems with deep inference learning. So um, here's a quick outline of my presentation today. So first off, I will briefly introduce what the problem is about, what the inventory management problem is about, and then I'll quickly go through the literature review and the methodology, and then finally I'll present the uh, uh, results of the numerical experiments, and then some conclusions and uh, future research. So first of all, what is inventory management is about? So uh, it is ultimately about minimizing cost by deciding, uh, by making inventory decisions. So usually it's by deciding uh, when to order some products and how many lists order when we do some, when we do order. And it typically involves uh, inventory holding costs and back order costs, which we want to minimize. So the holding cost is uh, the cost related to just holding inventory. For example, we need space, we need space in the warehouse. So if we uh, stock too much and we need to pay the rent for the warehouse. And also because the inventory will take up some capital. So it's money that we could have invested somewhere else. So uh, the interest is the cost. And then on the other side, we have the back order cost. So that means uh, the cost when we don't have something. So that would be uh, some kind of uh, implicit cost because uh, uh, we don't have the inventory to sell. So we lose the opportunity to make money or uh, because customer uh, are not happy. So those are implicit costs when we don't have inventory costs, uh, when we don't have the inventory. So usually that, those are the two types of typical costs. Uh, that we want to balance by deciding the uh, ordering quantities. So inventory management is very important. It's shown, it's shown to uh, impact uh, companies' financial performances. And it's even shown uh, that uh, if a company make an announcement that it has too many inventory or too less inventory, uh, the market value would drop significantly. So that's the uh, background of uh, the inventory management. So today, uh, our study, uh, we focus on a beer distribution game. So um, it is a game uh, initially introduced in an MIT supply chain classroom. Um, initially, uh, the professor there uh, created this class to show that uh, in a supply chain, it's very important to, to uh, communicate your information and make the right order quantities uh, while communicating with uh, the other parties in the supply chain. So, um, the supply chain means that uh, when you order something, uh, that involves more than one party. So for example, we want to, well, when we want to buy a beer, we go to a shop, but the beer doesn't just appear in the shop. It has to be come from somewhere. So actually the retailer would order from the wholesaler, the wholesaler will order from the distributor, and then the distributor would need to order from the manufacturer, the factory, so on and so forth. So here we simplify, uh, simplify the supply chain here uh, in the beer game with uh, four parties involved. So their retailer, uh, wholesaler, distributor, and manufacturer. So each of them has to decide uh, how many units of beer to order as time goes on. And then uh, we want them to make the right decision. We want, we want them to make the right order quantity so that the inventory holding cost and the back order cost is minimized. So originally this, uh, this game was introduced to show the importance of uh, communication along the supply chain. But actually, uh, later on, it is shown that this is a very interesting problem in terms of optimization and uh, analytical, analytical solution. So um, three studies uh, dated back to 1960s uh, found that uh, in a special case, when the uh, back of the course cost is only incurred at the first stage, which is the retailer, then we know the optimal policy, which is called a uh, based off policy. Uh, with an uh, analytical optimized target stock level. And that is only a, a special case. So for a general case, when there are back, back order costs everywhere, we don't know what is the optimal solution. So um, later on, there are some other studies try to uh, solve this problem. So people try to use like genetic algorithm or traditional reinforcement learning uh, or even deep learning methods to solve the problem. Uh, here is a few studies uh, I, I, I reviewed. And um, all of these um, study, previous studies, they have the same or similar problem where they consider uh, uh, discrete 
action space and state space. So action means that the quantity they want to order, a state is the uh, inventory position, what state it is in, uh, the information they know. So this information, uh, they only consider the discrete uh, cases, meaning that uh, the actions that they, 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 that they take um, is very coarse. So for example, if we want to decide uh, how many quantities to order, uh, the quantity could range from zero to 1,000, but because the decision is discrete um, and it is a very limited small number, they can only decide maybe it's 100, 200, 300, and you cannot decide it's like 350 because there would be too many actions. And then due to the uh, curse of dimensionality, and then the problem just cannot be solved in a reasonable time. So uh, to address this issue, so recently there is um, this latest study that came out just 2021, uh, uh, a paper using the DQM, the Deep Q network to solve the problem. So it partially solved the problem because uh, they can deal with a continuous state space, but still the action space is discrete. So given these issues, so we can see that uh, there are some unaddressed issue with the previous studies. So uh, they use discrete action, so they don't have a continuous action. And then also they only control one uh, facility in the supply chain. So all these previous studies, they can only make decision for one facility. So while the other, they have to predefine some other policy. Um, so that is not ideal because that, that is, uh, you cannot uh, have a, a good collaboration when you can only control one, but not all of them. And then final issue is that uh, those algorithms, they study, they learn, the agents learn from scratch. So the agent doesn't uh, leverage any domain knowledge that domain knowledge that we accumulated uh, along along the research. So uh, what this study want to do is to apply a uh, state of art uh, deep reinforcement learning. So what deep reinforcement learning is is about is just combining uh, reinforce, traditional reinforcement learning and deep learning. So on the reinforcement learning side, uh, it's a learning method that uh, let the agent learn. Uh, by trial and error is uh, different from other optimizing, optimizing technique where uh, we analyze them uh, analytically and try to reason what would be the best action. Here in reinforcement learning, we let the agent to explore randomly to try different action and see what the rewards would be, what the outcome would be. And then the agent will somehow, if it gets good reward and then it reinforces the action. And if it gets bad reward and then it just kind of don't want to take that action. So it learn by trial and error. And on the other side, we combine the uh, power of deep learning. So by using the deep neural networks, it has like a, uh, it has a very, it is a very powerful uh, function approximator. So we use the neural networks to approximate uh, the function to get the policy or to approximate the, the function to estimate what, what, is, what would be the reward of taking those actions? What would be the uh, value of taking that, that action in certain states? So there are many um, DRL algorithms. So I just uh, show some of them here and it's uh, developing very fast every year, there are new uh, algorithms. So uh, we uh, cannot try all of them. So we try three of them. So namely the A2C, the DDDQN, the TD3, we chose them based on their different char characteristics. And the one that we have to, we think that would have the most potential is the last one, the TD3. So uh, it is one that uh, has, has the continuous action space. So uh, it can potentially solve the uh, problem of curse of dimensionality. Um, so uh, we try these three algorithms. And then on top of that, uh, we added uh, extra components. Uh, we, uh, we propose a, a mechanism for exploration called heuristics guided explorations. So as mentioned before, the reinforcement re learning learn by trial and error. So one very important aspect of reinforcement learning is uh, exploring, trying different things. So uh, traditionally, there are some other typical exploration strategy, like epsilon greedy, meaning that there's like a small possibility epsilon that the agent would just do random things uh, without uh, thinking about anything. So there are also uh, like Gaussian noise where uh, we want to take some action, but we don't take that action directly. We add some noise to it. So it's like a action or intended action plus some noise. So it explore around the intended action, but not exactly the intended action. And then also there's like entropy bonus, meaning that uh, 
we evaluate the entropy of the action. So if it is more random and we give, we give them some bonus, so act, the agent would learn to do some random things uh, and then explore. So we propose that on top of these, uh, we want to utilize, we want to leverage domain knowledge, uh, not just exploring randomly. We want the agent to explore uh, meaningful uh, actions. So we uh, incorporate known heuristics. So it, the idea is very simple. So we say small probability, the agent would not explore randomly, but instead it would explore according to some heuristics. So by doing this, and then the agent would generate some meaningful path so that it learns um, uh, more fast and then uh, more stably. And then this, this uh, help is only needed at the beginning uh, because the agent knows nothing at the beginning, but as time go, go on, as the agent learns more, and as probably would decay, so then the agent not only learns to perform like the heuristics, but also it could potentially learn to perform better than the heuristics. So this is the uh, methodology that we take. And then going back to the problem itself, um, so here's the formulation without, without going into the details. So the idea is just to minimize the uh, total cost by taking some action. The action is the uh, ordering quantities that we want to make. And then um, according to the state we are in, the state uh, meaning information about the demand, about our inventory level at different places and about how many order we have in the pipeline. Um, so this is the formulation. And then uh, the numerical experience take, we try many different settings. So uh, we try the uh, decentralized approach where we only control one agent like the previous studies. We also try the centralized uh, version where the agent makes decision for all facilities. So potentially this has uh, like much better potential because it can have a better collaboration between the facilities, but it's also harder to, to train because um, now we, have, we, want, we need to make actions for everybody. So the action space grows uh, exponentially. And then we try, we have two different scenarios. So one, we know the optimal policy. The other one that we don't know the optimal policy. So the one that we don't know optimal policy is uh, obviously more interesting. We want to see that they want to see if the DR agent can outperform the no, no one policy. And then here we try three different DR algorithms. So the results show that the TD3 algorithm uh, actually performs the best in uh, scenario one. Uh, it outperforms the bench line uh, and it has a, a cost, cost saving of over 26%. Um, DDDQN also outperforms the uh, benchmark in some cases, but uh, not as good as the TD3. And A2C just uh, is not on par of uh, compared to the other two. And this is for the decentralized uh, case where we control only one facility. So what if we control all facilities at the same time? Um, so as I mentioned before, this one is harder to solve. And then uh, for, T for DDQN and for A2C, the problem is just too large to solve. It's, uh, it's infeasible. So only TD3 uh, is uh, feasible in this case. And we also tried uh, whether we add the heuristic guide exploration, the HGE, or when we don't have it. It's shown that uh, with the HGE, with the uh, heuristic guided exploration, um, it has a more significant cost saving. So the best cost saving can achieve is more than 38% of cost saving. So this is the best uh, compared to the benchmark or compared to the cases where we only control one facilities. So to show that the heuristic guided exploration, the, like the teacher, uh, the guidance is really useful. We show the graph here. Um, so the orange lines are the learning curve. So well, vertically is the higher up the better. So that's the, the cost, uh, the, the cost uh, it achieved. So the orange curves uh, is always like higher up compared to the blue curve and then it learns always faster. So it really shows that the uh, heuristic exploration really helps the learning to be faster and to be more stable. So um, to conclude uh, the result, um, both the DDDQN and TD3, these two algorithms, can find solutions that outperform the benchmark. Um, and if we, we let the agent control all four facilities at the same time, the cost saving is even more significant, it's up to 38%. And then uh, we also show that using the heuristics as like a guided exploration can improve the learning efficiency and stability. 
And this is only an ongoing work and this is pre preliminary results. And for the future, there's a lot of things, there are a lot of things that we want to uh, continue further on. So for example, we want to uh, find, more, find a more smarter, find a smarter way to decay the parameter mu where we want the agent to take some heuristics instead of uh, exploring randomly. Right now it's kind of arbitrary. We, uh, have, we have them as like a 0 0.9 at the beginning and then decay projectively over time and finally zero. But this is very arbitrary. We want to find out some way to uh, tune it automatically. And then the other uh, direction we want to explore is to consider different kinds of uh, cost structures. Uh, for example, setup cost. This is very common in production systems where we want to uh, set up a production that it would involve like a one-time setup cost. And this would change the uh, cost structures completely. Uh, and it's more general to um, for a production system. And then finally, we want to explore the scenarios where the supply chain is more complex. Not here, we only consider like a toy example where there are four facilities, four facilities. But for example, if we consider the supply chain of Walmart or Amazon, there could be like hundreds of or even thousands of nodes. So in those cases, um, I don't think it's uh, feasible for us to for the agent to make decisions for all of them all at the same time because the action space would just be too large to deal with. So in that case, uh, even with TD3, uh, we cannot use the centralized uh, centralized agent approach. So um, the potential solution that we envision would be using a multi-agent approach where uh, each agent uh, makes decision, decision for one first lead, and then we let uh, multiple agents to learn together. And the other uh, direction is using graph neural networks so that, um, well, uh, because the supply chain can be naturally represented as a graph. So in that case, there are many uh, areas that can try to uh, reduce a problem and then make it easier to learn. And then uh, also attention networks is another way to reduce the problem so that get this uh, easier to solve. Uh, these are the future directions we want to go. So uh, this sums up my presentation. Thank you.